Well, first of all, Rod, our experience is that we look at traffic signal intersections and roundabout intersections, find ones that have similar traffic counts or how many cars a day through each of those intersections. And what we have found that with the roundabouts we have roughly an 80% reduction in injury accidents at the roundabouts compared to traffic lights. Uh, what we find is that the severity of the accidents in the roundabouts goes way down compared to the traffic light for, for the reason that traffic lights people do speed up to get through the yellow lights and they try to get through and as it turns red the roundabout everyone has to slow down but no one really has to stop so traffic moves well we get this huge reduction in uh, in injury accidents uh, our cost is also uh, less um, you don't have the electricity cost of the lights you don't have the you realize it's a hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for to, to to put in a traffic light? Well, I've heard it's expensive. More than people realize what it is. Yeah. And yeah. not counting the electricity it takes to, to keep them powered up. Well, they have to bring back the engineers several times a right. year to, to fix the timing. Those components have to be replaced from time to, from time, to time. And then there's electricity cost. Right. And that leads us right into the uh, energy savings of roundabouts. They're good for the environment. That's good for the environment. Uh, not only the electricity savings, but you'll find that uh, people don't idle the roundabouts, they go straight through. We're calculating each roundabout 24,000 gallons of gasoline per year in our city. And a whole lot less air pollution, That's right. too, in the area. And how about smoothing out the traffic flow? Tell well, me that, about that. Well, that's one of the one of the best things. You know, safety is probably the most important, but the traffic flow is important too because our time is important. It's important not to be waiting in traffic all day. Uh, people, some people thought in the beginning in our city that well, those the roundabouts will slow us down, but but if you look at it, what really happens is they're not stopping for two or three minutes at the stoplights. Uh, Slowing down, waiting for a car or two to work their way through is much less time involved than uh, th entering the lottery to see if you get the red light or the green light. light. About 50% of the time you're going to get the red light, and you add all that up, you spend a lot less time when you drive through roundabouts. Uh, Jim, the, uh, we have two large traffic circles here, mm -hmm. one on St. Armand's, and we have one on Tuttle at Siesta Drive. Mm -hmm and uh, run us through the difference because there is a confusion. People think a traffic circle is a roundabout. We, we had that issue when we first started putting ours in. We um, had a lot of people, especially those from New England and the Northeast, who are familiar with the old rotaries or traffic circles as they're called up in that part of the country. Uh, the Arc de Triomphe in Paris would be a traffic circle. Uh, you, I got to look at St. Armand's the other day, and it's clearly a traffic circle. The difference, you look at the picture, you see the difference. That the roundabout's much smaller. You're also angled. You'll see that little uh, triangular piece of ground or grass as you go right. into the roundabout. Uh -huh. that, yeah, that diverts the cars off to the right. So if there is human error in an accident, you tend to get a minor side swipe, not, not a, a T-bone accident like as you would get if you went straight into the circle. The, the old traffic circles are much larger. There's weaving in between the lanes in the traffic circles. Uh, because they're larger, speeds get higher and you have more accidents. A modern roundabout is, is a very specific engineering reference to a particular type of traffic circle that's much smaller and much safer. Tell me, Jim, if you had uh, over how many years, uh, 11, 12 years you've been doing roundabouts? Yes. And uh, what was the reaction when you put the first couple in and did people accept it? And then how do they feel about it now? You seem to be keep getting reelected. Well, the community decided they really liked them after they realized that they moved traffic better. Uh, our statistics are always sent out in our city newsletter and on our government access channel. We talk about the safety benefits of roundabouts and how we've been able to reduce injury accidents and fatalities. Uh, and 
our community has become very proud of them. They, they realize that in m most cases they're a better solution than a traffic light. Traffic lights are dangerous places. Intersections are dangerous places. It's our job as elected officials to make them as safe as possible. We're always going to have human error, but uh, uh, you, you can't impact the type of accident. The diagram that's uh, on right now is, is a good one. So if you look to the left, you see all the potential conflict points at a traffic signal. 32 potential conflict points for the motorist. If you look over at the roundabout, you'll see just a few as you go in, as you go through, and as you leave. Uh, note also that in the roundabout, you've eliminated the left-hand turn motion. You get an awful lot of accidents when people are turning left. It's a difficult maneuver. So, well, well, aren't pedestrians safer in the crosswalk? Not really, because if that person, none of us know, that decides to run that yellow light or pink light or red light, and it's speeded up to 40 or 50 miles an hour to zip through, happens to hit a pedestrian, it's going to be a bad accident. It will. On the other hand, if everyone's going slowly in a roundabout, that accident's not going to be as bad. And more importantly, with particularly young drivers and elderly drivers whose response times aren't as good, the slower speeds in the roundabout are a good thing. Tell me what your experience is on accidents. It, uh, if it's safer, how much safer is it compared to the signalized intersections in your experience? Well, we, we had an 80% reduction in injury accidents. That's the most important statistic. But we also have, we have one street, the first street we had roundabouts on. It goes for about five miles. We put in two roundabouts and two traffic lights. It was a brand new street. What we found was that the property damage. You know, the police make an estimate every time there's an accident. These are the two car accidents. The average cost at the roundabout is about $2,500. Well, the average cost up at the roundabout is around $10,000. It's about four times more at the traffic lights because of the higher speeds. What a savings. And how about construction? Uh, one of the questions we get is, uh, are they more expensive to put in than a signalized intersection? Uh, if you're starting from scratch, uh, we'll say a four-way stop, the roundabout's going to be substantially less. When you say, but then I understand several of your proposals are about converting traffic lights to roundabouts. Yes, uh, and in fact the proposal is to place five roundabouts along the bayfront beginning at 10th Street yeah. and going on down around to Orange. And those would replace signalized intersections. Well, you'll be able to take the money from the signals, which, because they have to be so strong in Florida, withstand the hurricanes, I understand new at least, are worth two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand right. dollars $300,000. You'll be able to sell those old stoplight. Put them equipment. up on eBay. Yeah. We can do yeah, that. That's right. You could. You probably sell them on eBay. Well, but, but you also are sa going to save a lot of electricity. Uh, you need street lights to illuminate the intersection where there's a stoplight or a roundabout, but you, you don't have the cost of powering those stoplights. You don't have the cost of engineers coming out several times a year to fix the timing. Uh, and when you do have a storm and electricity goes out, you don't have to dispatch a police officer to direct traffic because the roundabout keeps functioning. Let's talk about the environment. Mm -hmm. The uh, your experience and what you've done with roundabouts to help the environment. We talked about less air pollution. Mm -hmm. We talked about uh, less uh, fuel use and waste of time intersection. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are the other environmental uh, impacts of roundabouts? Well, there's an interesting correlation between the environmental the cost of the gas you save and what it probably would cost per person to put on a roundabout. We've done some rough calculating on the back of a scratch pad and figured out that the cost of the conversion probably can be made up in a few years. We figure out how much everybody would pay to pay for it in your city, and then how much are they going to save in gasoline by not having to stop at those stoplights. But, but then you think about all the pollution right at that intersection near people's homes or condos that's not in the air. We're saving 24,000 gallons of fuel per year per roundabout in our city. And wouldn't with uh, cars going slower through the roundabout, it's going to be quieter. Wouldn't you lessen noise pollution? Yeah, you get rid of the brake noise, uh, you know, people screeching on their brakes and they realize they can't get through the yellow light. Um, 
cars are going slower. They burn less gas and they go slower too, Rod. So there's another savings.